a reputation sometimes that, or it was a reputation, that we have very good fighters in Ansteor. I mean, sometimes they say we have big fighters, which they refer to as corn-fed fighters. And sometimes they want us a lot. But one of the things that we've taught our fighters is we're all petite nobility, right? You're not mercenary scum. You're petite nobility, you know? So they went to the war, at, you know, between Aitenfeld and, you know, is it Kaye that they fight that Um war? Depends on which year this was. Uh, do you Australia. remember where, where it was? Well, Australia. if it's Burrow Creek or Great Desert or Estrella, there are different main enemies. And in specific, some Estrellas were different ones. So, well, all right. assume it's the West. All right, we'll assume <laughs> it's the West. It's somewhere west of us. Yes, anyway. that, that's for certain sure. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, uh, uh, Johan, Duke Johan of, of, of Aitenville, right, was recruiting. So he ran up to the Onsteorans to say, how much would it be to hire your services? And these were a group of people that didn't have any titles, right? And they looked at Duke Johan and they said, we fight for honor. We are nobility. And we fight with our friends. And Johan sort of crossed his eyes at this and went back and says, they're, they're not they're not mercenaries, they're, they're nobility, and they have to fight with friends, so that would mean I'd have to fight with them, right? And they go back, and, and, and then the gentleman had said, but we accept gifts. You know, so they, they got these people together, and they ended up fighting, and they ended up, because Johan doesn't want to fight in a boring place, they fought, like, in interesting places which is one of the things, but by all the other mercenaries sort of got theirs, you know, at their campsite. The gentlemen and, and I think a couple of ladies of Onsteora walked up in court and were presented with silver pennies, you know, and not only that, they were presented with a gift to give to their king. There will be a county-wide test in the tornado warning system. This is only a test. If you were in actual emergency, you would be told what to do. Please, the alarms are loud and they are long. It is a test. It is only a test. Thank you. That's a good idea. I, re yeah. I was here on Friday when that thing went off. And of course, it was clear blue skies. Right. So it was like, okay, this must be a test. But this guy is a little more questionable. <laughs> so anyway, they went up. And they received it because they were nobles, you know. And that's one thing I keep. We keep telling them: you go wherever you go, nobles get paid more than than mere mercenaries. My favorite, though, story is about Wolfstar. Wolfstar had the king of Onstior in it, Michael of Monmouthshire. And when they were going to Estrella. Um, they decided that they weren't going to uh, pack any dishes. And their wives were sitting there giving them dishes and they were taking the dishes out. And they ended up being employed by the queen of, uh, by the queen. And they said she was a beautiful lady with great estates. <laughs> And um, so, one of the payments they had for them was that they got to eat with the crown. Now, well, you have the king of Onstiora sitting up there and his wife is saying, you must be good, right? But they didn't have any dishes. And so, when the meat came around, they just grabbed it in their hands and ate it because they had no dishes. And when the gravy came around, they drank the gravy out of the gravy bowl <laughs> and dunked their meat in it, you know. And, and the king of Onstiora, which is a wolf star too, is going, I want to do that, you know. And they were horrible. They ate completely with their fingers 
you know, off the platters that the food came by. And then the queen sort of had this, you know, this sort of pain look on her face, and for some reason the nobility... For some reason? <laughs> for some reason the nobility left the room, and there was this table that was full of subtleties and liqueurs. And so Wolfstar ate and drank all the subtleties and the liqueurs. And the queen came back in and she said, that was a contest, it hasn't been judged yet. <laughs> now, in, the, oh, dear. in these group of people that are eating out of bowls and drinking gravy and dumping their meat, there's three laurels, right? You know, so led by the chief of Wolfstar, which is uh, Daniel, they went over there and basically sat on the table and crouched down and poked their fingers in the res what was left and talked about it. They said, you know, with great knowledge, I mean, you know, we, we were, you know, they remembered each subtlety and they remembered what it was made out of and what was, how hard it is to make, because two of them are cooking laurels. And they have all of this, and, and of course, Wolfstar remembers every single alcoholic drink that was on that table and could tell you what was the best. So they announce, they give the queen the winner of this contest, and she announces that she feels that this was the best judged subtlety and liquor contest that she had ever attended. <laughs> The proof is in the pudding, and <laughs> it was all gone. Of course, so all it was thoroughly judged, if nothing else. <laughs> yes. And when they all got home, their wives were really upset at them, and swore that they would never let Wolfstar out without feminine supervision. Um, Wolfstar is part of Cadal, and. Um, one of the things that happened is that Randall von Orlikwald was our war leader at the time. And Randall stands, he six foot six, and he had been doing the job of playing Captain America in things. So he looks like Captain America, right? And he, ha he had his beautiful legs. <laughs> Handsome man, right? And he came up to me and he said, um, I have found my family and you will accept them into the Cadal or I will leave the Cadal. Now, something was really happening about this because every time he mentioned that, my fellow Cadal members would fall out of their chairs laughing. So I knew that this was going to be something, you know, pretty bad. So we get called up in, in Michael Clombershire's court and Randall stands up with a piece of Cadal flag and uh, plaid and he puts it, he grabs two young people, men and he carries it around and then he calls up all of Wolfstar and they wrap the plaid around Wolfstar, right? And he says, this is my family. Lords and ladies, this is a demonstration of the site-wide notification system. At 10.55, approximately five minutes from now, there will be a county-wide test of the tornado warning system. This is a loud, long siren. This is a test. It is only a test. If you were in an actual emergency, you would be told where to go and what to do. Thank you for your attention. That's a good to know. Mm -hmm. Nice well, and clear. <laughs> Sorry. So anyway, we come You've to You've got five minutes. Yeah, uh, all right, I think. <laughs> so we came to this uh, court, because and they have Wolfstar encircled with the Cadal plaid. <clears throat> and I, I look at uh, them, and they look at me, and they chuckle, 
right? And I look at them, and they look at me, and they chuckle. And I ask, I say to the king, who is now within this circle, may I please have your knife? And he gives me his knife. And at that point, I slash my thumb and start bleeding everywhere and anoint each and every one of them with a thumbprint of blood in the middle of their forehead, including the poor two gentlemen who have never, you just stood up to help hold the flag, plaid. And I announced that all of them are blood of my blood. And Daniel, you know, the chief of the wolf star, rushes up and grabs a knife and cuts himself and anoints me, right? And back in this group where there's like five nights, they're all doing this, right? And I was told later they were worried that they'd be required to do it too. And so I'm bleeding everywhere. And all the Kadal are chuckling there, you know, and, and Wolfstar is going, shit. I then got carried off by the high urchins that told me that I was stupid because who knew where Michael's knife had been? <laughs> sort of kind of wisdom in that. <laughs> but so for many, many years, you know, uh, Wolfstar is part of Kadal, but you're not, Kadal is not part of Wolfstar, it's not a reciprocal thing. And sometimes, they remember it, and sometimes they forgot, they forgot it. When we were at the first war with the middle, uh, the poor Trimerians were, had problems because they didn't have as many people. So uh, we didn't want to, uh, the first war, Bear Killer was on the flank, and Enman put us on the flank. Well, Bear Killer was, I don't know if you knew this, that John the Bear Killer was noted for changing clothes in the battle. So, you know, so nobody knew who Bear Killer was. And so when Inman carefully put us on the end, Jonathan does wears glasses, but not when he's fighting. We're all blind as bats, right? Uh, so he just sort of aimed us at the Bear Killer's unit. But unfortunately, we can read heraldry. And we saw the, you know, it, he may have changed clothes, but he's still carrying the same shield. I mean, you know, incognito doesn't necessarily work that way. So anyway, the first wave, we did our job and ran up and stopped Bear Killer's unit. And now we're looking at having to fight them again. And remember, we married um, Siobhan to Edward. Well, we made a, a pack, that little, our family made a pack with Meridies. And when the king of Trimera said, we will take no help from anyone, right? The king of, you know, they're going, oh, he won't let us have you as helpers because we didn't want to kill him again. And uh, I said, but we're Kadal and you're Meridies and we have an alliance. And they said, yes, that's true. So they took in all the Kadal into the, Meridier's army, right? And, and you know, we're doing this, you know, we're, we're going into the, the enemy's army. And what happens is that Finn and, uh, well, William the Bear r rushes up and he's, and we were almost completely denuding the army and he rushes up, he says, and people were saying, my cat, is related to your cat, therefore that makes me part of Kadal. <laughs> <laughs> and finally, the, the, he says, no more, no more, you can't have any more of the Wolf Star Kadal group, you know. And so, you know, the ones that got left behind were like, <sighs> <coughs> and I'm almost coming to the end of this, and I hope you enjoyed the stories I, I told. Uh, <laughs> well, maybe it wasn't John, right? It could have been. Oh, well, there's a good chance it's one of his squires because he almost always felt pole arm and he had one of his squires carrying his shield around. 
Well, so, but it didn't mean any difference. We knew that group of people. They couldn't see who was in front of them anyway because they're all blind as exactly. bats, right? <laughs> so it didn't matter. It just gave them a naming point. Yeah, uh, well, yeah. That was, that was always the youngest squire's job. And then after he got beaten to a pulp, then the rest of the older squires would go and tell him what just happened to him and why all these knights kept chasing him around the war all day. <laughs> <laughs> well, my, the first war we had in the